Hello viewer, welcome back to 54A Continuing the uh, Indian blanket designed bowl <laughs> I think I've decided what I want to do with it And uh, that isn't to throw it in the bin just yet Now the base I've got some lumps of cherry here um, Obviously it's not big enough so it's going to have to be planed and glued together to form a nice cherry base for it. So that's that bit sorted. Now the top of it is better. I've got even more cherry and I've still got some walnut left. Now what I want to do with the top is put another segmented ring round it but out of two types of wood cherry and walnut this cherry has got to be cut down the middle I don't want it to be too, too thick and then I shall prepare the walnut and stick that onto the edge of the cherry and then I'll make some wedges and a segmented ring so hopefully it'll have a cherry band with a walnut trim on the inside edge so it'll it'll sort of go in very slightly that's the theory it'll probably turn out totally different you know me just wing it but uh, i've got a lot of preparing to do cutting planing gluing everything's got to be spot on as usual so i'm going to get on with that lot um, so the base, I actually don't want it just to be quite a boring base, I was thinking of putting it on a little pedestal, uh, but I'll have to sort through some wood and see what I've got and if it's going to work or not, if not it'll have to be just a, a flat base. So that's the idea, so I say a lot of sawing to do, um, planing, gluing, cutting wedges up clamping all them so uh, I'll see in about a week's time <laughs> bye for now okay I'll just show you where I'm up to so far I've cut most of the wedges um, as you can see cherry and walnut now I was a little bit too short I only had enough for nine instead of ten so let's move that out of the way just gluing another strip up here with the cherry and the walnut that will give me my tenth segment and a little bit to spare now then I decided like an idiot I want to put infills in between the segments like I put an infill in between the, uh, the rings on the main item so I've glued another strip of cherry and walnut together that's all clamped up but then I thought I've got to do cherry and walnut, walnut and cherry, so reverse it if you know what I mean. So I've got a piece here, walnut and cherry. Now all that's gluing up, all, all clamped up, hopefully that will be alright, it might, might not work but we'll soon see. <laughs> the next bit over here that's the base all clamped up that's made up of four pieces of cherry all clamped up nicely glued together so I'll leave that for a bit that's where I'm up to at the moment and um, I don't know I might put something in the middle here I don't know yet I sort of winging it but we'll see what it turns out like. However, there you go, that's the story so far. I think I've just about used all my clamps up there, so uh, I'll leave that for a few hours now. We'll see you later on. Right, I've got all the segments now for the top ring, and I've cut out some little inserts, sort of reversed to what the segments are. 
so they'll go in there something like that okay so that's the next little job to do get this ring all glued up clamped up now when I was cutting the segments I had these little wedges left uh, which you get sometimes when you're just cutting it one way and of course there's enough to make a little circle now this is what I'm hoping I can put in the actual base of, of the dish itself the bowl whatever it is so I'm going to also glue those together and uh, that's the next stage then I'll concentrate on building the base up <coughs> which I have got clamped up out of sight so I'm going to get on with this main ring first then do this and then I'll get back to you okay that's the ring all glued and clamped up now so I'll put that to one side to dry off uh, don't forget if you're going to do anything segmented do a dry run first before you put any glue on just to make sure there's not going to be any gaps and this one seems to have turned out fine so I'll put that to one side out of the way. I haven't got a lot of workshop space here. The base is roughly cut into a round. I just, just did it on the bandsaw. Didn't bother getting the uh, the jig out. I just done it sort of freehand. It's going to be turned anyway. Um, the base is then going to have. I've decided to put a, a, a little pedestal on it, but just to keep in with the with the uh, feature of two kinds of wood I've cut these little wedges just a, a block of three inch square straight down corner to corner and I've got another row which I shall put on opposite and that will be rounded off obviously on the lathe and then the base will, will just be a, another plain cherry base the foot of the thing to, to finish it off um, that's about the progress I've done so far. I'm going to get these all glued up, do a bit of sanding and uh, glue those up. And then uh, the next stage will be to get this on the lathe and trim it up and start adding bits to it. So, see you later on. Right, the first thing I want to do is make a glue chuck. This is going to be the actual pedestal base. Uh, it's in a very rough state at the moment, just uh, haven't bothered doing anything with it other than glue the segments together. This is just any piece of old scrap wood will do, but this did have some varnish on it, so I've just scraped the varnish off with my carbide cutter. <coughs> now, get your glue as hot as you can get it, and just put a continuous bead all the way around A nice bead, <clears throat> nice and thick. All the way around the job. Leave it for a few minutes to set afterwards. And this will hold it on. I've used a glue chuck before. And uh, it's surprising how well it works actually. So just do that all the way around. Now the reason I'm doing this, I want to put um, a mortise, I'll show you in a sec, let's get all the way around here. You don't have to be too neat as long as it's a continuous bead. That's it. Now, I want to put a mortise 
this side because this will be the actual bottom and this is the best way I can think of of holding this piece in the lathe so uh, this, is, this will be flattened off trued up and I'll put a mortise in there then I'll be able to take it off the glue chuck and get it in the jaws get this in the jaws of my chuck and put the next bit on I'm just going to carry on now just trimming this up now using a square carbide cutter more to go now I'll just cut the mortise in now hopefully and just the skew chisel now just to put the angle in on the shoulder to hold in the jaws And that's the mortise cut. Now I'll just put a bit more uh, finishing on this base because it's going to be difficult to get at otherwise. Just using a half round, well, round nose scraper. nice and gently no hurry at all I always say this in my videos but especially with this project I've been on it for weeks so another few minutes isn't going to make any difference that's pretty flat now I should get that all uh, sanded down and polished up take it off the glue chuck uh, and that's just a question of just break the bead with, it, with an old chisel and peel this away and they do come away relatively easily he said all the ones I've done before have anyway so I'll just get on with that now and then I'll reverse it right just got to get this bead off now and I've just got an old woodworking chisel sitting in my cupboard and just basically pull the bit of glue away from the joint and already you can see it's starting to come apart so then just force it off There you go, just clean that bit of glue off, which is no problem at all. It's, so it's surprising how well these glue chucks work. As long as you've got the glue really hot, it'll hold the work for you. That's no problem getting this bit of glue off. At least I've got a nice base now I can get in the jaws of my chuck, which is what I shall do next. Okay, these are the two blocks that I uh, glued up earlier on, the four wedges. Um, I've just marked a circle. I'm just going to knock the corners off on the bandsaw <clears throat> so it's less hassle to actually turn them when they're stuck on the uh, base. So I'll just knock those corners off now and then they'll be glued together and go onto the base. Right, the next stage, this is that little insert that I want to put into the base of the bowl if I can. So, and again, glue chuck. I've just turned it down a little bit because this is only a small thing. So uh, I'm just going to run another bead of glue around here and then round this off. Um, glue chucks, they work so well. They're so simple to make. And uh, 
if you haven't got a glue gun I recommend you go and buy one they're only a few quid this is only a cheap thing from a well-known DIY shop and uh, I think it cost about eight or nine quid uh, so it's well worth having in your in your locker they're very strong I've never had one fail on me yet and as you saw a few minutes ago it, they're easy to get off again but they really hold the work well I just want to glue this on and um, take it down to round then and I'll peel it off again that's that so I'll just let that set for a couple of minutes and I'll just round this off right I've got the stem glued to the base of the bowl which is that and then glued to the foot of the bowl which is that so yeah it's actually upside down at the moment um, I haven't got a press so I've put two great pieces of oak on the top of it and that's drying off so I shall leave that for a few hours I've also got the ring itself and again it's upside down this is the, the top ring that's glued onto that now and it's clamped as you can see don't be afraid to use clamps if you've got them use them as tight as you like I've got a really nice fit round there the glue is oozing out very nicely and also that's going to be left for a few hours so when that's all done we can start doing the next stage to this well this <coughs> this centerpiece I've just drilled a 16 mil hole with a spade bit to make a hole for a plug that I'm going to make um, just a little centerpiece save it being too much white color I thought I'd put a little bit of walnut in there so I've got a piece of walnut just a little off cut in the lathe I'm just going to turn that down to round until this fits on fits on it nicely I'm not going to bother with the calipers I'll just keep turning it down till I've got a nice tight fit just about there so I'll just make it a bit longer and then glue it into the uh, hole right I've just put plenty of glue in the hole just getting it onto the spindle now that'll do nicely it's oozing out nicely nice tight fit now what I'm going to do is leave that on there till it's dry then I can use that spindle as a sort of jam chuck while I round this off and then I'll just part it off afterwards so I suppose you could call it a plug chuck there you go I've invented something <laughs> there you go I'll just leave that to dry now and that will be the next step Right, I've got the uh, the bottom half of the bowl in jaws of my chuck now, and this needs truing up totally. Once this is trued up, I've got to make like a mortise in there for my little centerpiece to fit in. So that's the next stage. First of all, get it all rounded up true faced off nice and true and I'm not too bothered about the, the stem at the moment I want to leave that as thick as possible
Well, this will just just about jam in there now. Unfortunately, I had a bit of a catch. I don't know if the camera will pick it up. There you see it, which has ruined the edge of this recess I was making. So, um, all I can think of is I'm still going to put that in there, but I'll just have to sort of make a little feature of the edge of it uh, to try and cover that up or fill it in afterwards with a bit of uh, sawdust and glue. But that's what I'm going to do anyway. I'm going to glue this in. Tap it into place now because it's a really nice tight fit. Plenty of glue on it, and then I'll sort that out later. Well, it's gone in, um, really tight fit actually. And I've just made a little bit of uh, sawdust putty, bit of wood glue, and sawdust, and just jammed it in where the uh, the catch was. It wasn't hardly noticeable once I got the centerpiece in, but I've just done a, a little repair around there just to. Be on the safe side so that, I'm going to leave that now to dry off it's getting dark now I think my dinner's ready so I shall carry on with this tomorrow right that's all nice and dry now so the next day I'll just take this down and finish trimming this base up before I can put the ring on I'm just using my uh, round nose scraper here, I've just sharpened it up. I'm in no hurry, I'm taking my time, I want to get a nice finish on this. So uh, it might take a fair while. But I shall carry on and I'll show you what it's like in a few minutes. Right, I have to put uh, the segmented ring in my coal jaws. don't like using these really, but I need to get this face really nice and flat for the gluing so I want to take a little skim off here I may even take a little bit of the the corners off keep the weight down a bit because it's it's going to be quite a heavy thing on, on my uh, lathe when it's all assembled but the main thing is to get this face done so I'm just going to do a quick skim over with that But I think I'll go over that now with a uh, sandpaper block just to finish it without going too much and that'll do for that bit well while I've got it in the cold jaws I thought I'd just surround this off as much as I can uh, might do the inside as well it'll give me it'll make it easier for me to mark up when I'm fitting it onto the base if it's round I think so I'm just going to take a bit off, and take a bit of the weight off anyway. That's better, just round the outside edge. And I'll just do the same on the inside. Right, there's the base and um, the inner diameter of the blanket ring is approximately 170 mil so I've drawn a circle 170 mil that will give me an, an eye line to line up when I put the glue on which is going to be now and uh, after I've done that uh, I've got many many heavy blocks of oak line around I should just pile a load on the top leave it probably maybe even till tomorrow it's got to be so set I can't risk anything that's not quite set it's got to be rock hard so I'm going to get that glued into position approximately like that and uh, see you later on bye for now well silly me I don't need blocks of wood at all I forgot all about my clamps so, 
there we go there's a uh, 10 clamps on that you can see inside the glue is oozing out nicely so it should be a pretty good joint and uh, you can see underneath you can just see the glue little bead on the outside so it should be okay but I'm going to leave that now overnight right got it all chucked up uh, because it's now tomorrow but it's not tomorrow actually it's today but you know what I mean uh, right seems pretty central we'll go about that I'm going to carry on taking a bit off this side first and a bit off the base here and then uh, move the chuck rest no, chuck rest tool rest round to the front and then start doing the same on that side so here we go that's coming on quite nicely just keep moving the tool rest in a little bit I forgot to mention I've put the tail stock up and it's inside touching the base of the, the bowl this is quite a heavy thing and, and at the moment all the weight is far away from the chuck so uh, I'm going to leave that in until I took quite a bit of wood off make the whole job a lot lighter Yeah, not bad. Now I'm leaving the stem as thick as I can at the moment because that's extra strength for when I'm turning this side. So I'm not going to touch that just yet. Right, I'm going to carry on, finish this uh, shape off and then move everything around. Right, I've just moved the tool rest a bit now. So uh, I can concentrate on the, the top end of the bowl. I've just started knocking the corners off. It's the same as down there. Nothing really interesting. Yep, long way to go yet. I mean, I still haven't got this round yet. I've got to take all these flat surfaces off. But uh, that's the general idea, yeah? I shan't bore you with the rest of that just yet, so I'll just carry on. I'm just using my half inch, I think it's half inch, something like that, um, round nose scraper. Use any tool you want as long as you're comfortable with it. I like the scraper for jobs like this. Right, I shall carry on and see you later. I've got a very rough shape now on the outside. Um, don't want to take it to perfection just yet. Well, I don't think I'll ever get perfection. Now, I've just started taking a bit off this lip now. And uh, for this I've just started using the Ellsworth grind spindle gouge. just want to go sort of back instead of it being level. I want it to go in slightly. And that's what I'm going to carry on doing for a while now and then uh, a bit of shaping on the inside obviously and then I'll carry on trying to get the finished shape on the whole thing to enable me to get a bit further in under the lip now I've started using this uh, swan neck hollowing tool uh, so it comes in very handy I'll tell you when you're trying to get in like that because uh, I haven't got a swivel head lathe so I have to swivel myself, so uh, that comes in very handy. Good little tool. Yeah, 
Yeah, I'm definitely glad I bought this. Well worth the money. I'm just putting a few finishing shaping cuts on the outside top edge now. Still using the scraper, I've gone to a slightly wider one. No particular reason. I'm getting some lovely shavings off. Very, very fine shavings off this. Uh, it's worth saying, I know it sounds a bit obvious, but keep your tools sharp. Um, before I started doing this, I got to about five or six of the tools that I know I'm going to use on this job and even if they were sharp or not I just touched them up on the grinder so they're nice and fresh so I know when I pick one up it's going to be ready to work well, I'm pretty happy with that now that shape so I'm going to sand the bowl down before I even start doing the, uh, the stem and the base so uh, I'm going to get on with that now I'll so sand it up to 600 and uh, see what it looks like. Again, I can't stress how important it is to go through the grit. Don't miss a grit. I mean, I'm getting the shine on this already, and there's no polish. This is just sanding. So just take your time. I know not, a lot of people don't like sanding, but it's well worth it for the finished eff effect. Okay, I've got two coats of sanding sealant on the bowl itself now. Um, locked it back with the scotch pad in between coats, etc. Uh, it's come out quite good actually, quite pleased with that. No polish on it yet. So now I'm going to start concentrating on the stem and putting some shape on the base. I hope. Seem to have found the right tool for the job now. It's a little 10mm round carbide tip and uh, that seems to be taking it off quite nicely. Yep, it's definitely the right tool for the job. Right, I'm going to carry on with that see if I can get some better shape on it. And I'll see you later on. Right, I've got the stem just about how I want it now. So all I've got to do now is round this base off. Just a nice sort of dome shape there, round there. And then I'll sand it all down. Sanding sealant, two coats. And then I'll give it some polish. And I'll show you the finished article. So there you go. Now then, the base is a bit plain compared to the rest of the bowl. It's just the light wood instead of light and dark, light and dark everywhere else. So, I thought, I'll try and put a little inlay just around the rim of the base. I've got a very thin strip of veneer here, it's only half a mil thick. So I'm going to cut a little groove in with my thin parting tool and glue that in. Just to set the base off so it's got some colour in it. That's the plan. If it doesn't work, you'll soon know about it. Gotta go a little bit wider. Right, 
right I think that will just about go in there yes I think that will look all right all right I'll get on and glue it in and there it is folks finished article I'm really pleased with that I should be it's been took me three blooming weeks still there you go it's um it's come out as good as I could have expected it to and uh, very pleased with the finish a couple of coats of the old uh, wood wax 22 and uh, there you go that's it the stems come out quite nice after all the hassle I think the little bead of little band of uh, inlay just sets the bottom off enough and uh, yep well worth the effort would I do another one <laughs> I doubt it um, maybe in a few months time but uh, there's lots of other projects I want to try so uh, that's it folks hope you like it anyway I do and I hope the wife will I think she will anyway look what I've got a nice new toy to play with um, early Christmas present um, with two airbrushes one gravity feed one siphon feed I'm looking forward to having a go with this um, I think actually it's the same model as Martin Saban Smith got and he seems to get good results with his but he's very artistic and I'm not so uh, I'll need quite a bit of practice but uh, in some up and coming videos I dare say I'll be having a go with this little toy anyway folks back to the bowl there it is again so that's the project which has taken me on and off three weeks um, so not eight hours a day but you know two or three hours every day on it getting it right and that's the best I can come up with so I hope you like it and um, I've got quite a few new subscribers over the past few days so thank you very much for subscribing to the channel I hope I can keep you entertained and uh, to everybody else thanks very much for watching please like share and subscribe and I'll see you soon on the next one bye for now